Thank you. And uh, my suggestion for Bosque 2017 is to have a uh, Bosque bingo where everybody would get cards that would say uh, Jupiter, uh, Docker, Galaxy, IGV. And so, you know, there would be a prize for the first person to get all those terms. So uh, you're going to hear some more now in this talk. Uh, so I'm going to describe an environment that we've created in the Messerov lab, Gene Pattern Notebooks, uh, which integrates two complementary approaches to the challenge of managing tools and data sets, ensuring reproducibility, and in general, making science as easily available as possible to as wide an audience as possible. So what are these two approaches? The first is the analysis notebook environment. And this is our familiar Jupiter that we've been hearing about for the past two days. So systems such as these provide an environment where researchers can integrate the exposition of a scientific project with the associated code. And notebooks are built step by step into a complete product. And the idea is to have a uh, inception to publication process whereby the same environment that allows you to uh, design an experiment, iteratively refine it, also provides the environment that allows you to publish it. So what is uh, the, the whole here, the whole is that uh, these environments require programming skills. So the complementary approach, I'm going to call bioinformatics aggregation tool portals. So the goals here are similar, also to provide reproducibility, analysis provenance, easy sharing and dissemination of results. Uh, but there are some aims that differ in crucial points. Uh, and in a sense, that makes them the flip side of the notebook environment. These focus on wrapping existing tools and making them available for the non-programmer. They allow you to encapsulate workflows, share them, edit them, and they also provide transparent access to scalable compute resources. And the big picture here is to make complex analyses available to the non-programming researcher or to the computational biologist who wants to do other things other than worry about implementation and installation. However, to date, there have been a couple of attempts, but there is no general way where either analyses or pipelines can be easily annotated or marked up in such a way that they can comprise the complete uh, beginning to end reproducible research document. So what we have done is to create the gene pattern notebook environment, which has taken the notebook capabilities of Jupyter, and we've added the ability to make all of the analyses within the gene pattern platform for integrative genomics available from within the Jupyter notebook environment. So one of the most important points about this is that now genomic researchers can have access to hundreds of analyses without the need to program. Okay, and at this point, because I'm talking to an audience of largely programmers, I want to address this last bullet, no programming required. Because you can well ask the question, uh, take a look at how far Jupyter Notebook has come and how far Python packages have come. How much further do we have to go to make programming easy for the non-programming user? We already have SciPy and Matplotlib and Pandas and all those things. Um, isn't that enough? So as an example, I want to show you the difference between using Jupyter as it is now and Jupyter with the Gene Pattern Notebook extension. I'm going to show you two notebooks that implement the same analysis. Uh, and that analysis is going to be to take a data set of 14 different cancer types and to train a support vector machines model to create a predictor and then to run that predictor on a separate test set. And here is uh, a Jupyter notebook that is doing this via uh, straight Python code. So you can see here we need to import our required Python libraries. Uh, we have utility functions that allow us to write and read data sets of the specific type that we need. Um, we then actually read those data sets. We read our class label data sets. We read our train and test data sets. And here we are finally, we're creating our SVM model on our training data set. And we run the model on our test data set. So here we are, and we can see that on the one hand, yes, this is true. I just trained a model with one line of code, and I just ran that model on a test set with one line of code. But look at all the things that I needed to do to get here. So taking a look at the gene pattern notebook that does the same thing. Now, I haven't 
uh, demoed all of the functions of Gene Pattern Notebook, but you'll get the picture. Here, we log into a Gene Pattern server. We create a SVM model on our training data set, and you'll see there's no code here. What I'm doing is I am filling in fields of our HTML form here and uploading data sets. And once I've done that, I send the resulting file to another SVM analysis that will run our module on the model that I just created. So you can see here the difference in the coding that's required between Jupyter and Python, even as it is, and Jupyter with the notebook extension. So getting back to the capabilities of gene pattern, the gene pattern architecture has a number of components that make it a very well-suited complement to Jupyter Notebook. Uh, they include a repository of hundreds of bioinformatics tools and visualizers. Uh, there's also a pipeline environment that allows users to encapsulate complete workflows. And the point about this is, if you create a workflow in gene pattern, you can also embed the workflow in a Jupyter Notebook as easily as you can embed a single analysis. There's also an analysis engine that is callable as a web service, which is what makes it easy to integrate with Jupyter. And uh, there are also a number of different ways of interacting with the gene pattern analysis engine, uh, the notebook being the one that we're discussing. To get a little bit more into the analyses that are available, there are several hundreds of analyses, much more than can fit on one slide. And I encourage you to take a look at the poster uh, that goes a little bit more into detail about this. Um, but the broad categories include uh, domain-specific analyses, such as uh, RNA-seq and microarray gene expression, uh, SNP and copy number analysis, uh, regulatory networks, gene set enrichment analysis, uh, proteomics, and many other domains, in addition to general purpose machine learning algorithms that will work on any type of data that you can place essentially into an array format. So, what is it like to work with the Gene Pattern Notebook and what are the new features that we've added? The first is a login cell. This allows you to connect to any existing Gene Pattern server that you can reach online. There is a module browser window. This gives you several ways to find the analyses that you're looking for. If you know exactly what you're looking for, you can just type that or you can also do keyword searches. The uh, meat and potatoes of the Gene Pattern Notebook environment is the Gene Pattern Analysis cell. And this provides you with an easy to use interface to the actual analysis that's being run. Once you launch a job, you see a job cell that displays the status of the analysis that is running on the selected server. And once the analysis is completed, it also provides you with the result files. And I wanna emphasize that the Gene Pattern Notebook extension integrates seamlessly with the Jupyter Notebook. So if you are a programmer and if you prefer to do your work in Python, you can access gene pattern analysis results very easily by referencing a job object, which consists of the word job and the ID of the object. And it's a method off of that. And that provides you with the uh, names of all of the result files that you can use in later analyses. So how can you access the Gene Pattern Notebook uh, functionality? We have implemented a repository, and this is based on Jupyter Hub, and it's currently in beta. And as a side note, uh, we were hoping that this would be available to use today, but our systems people still need to flip a couple of bits in order to make it uh, available to the outside world. Um, however, so go to notebook.genepattern.org, but not just yet, in just a couple of days. Um, this includes the entire uh, environment that is required for you to do work in Jupyter plus Gene Pattern Notebook. So that includes the Anaconda distribution that provides all of the Python scientific packages, etc. And uh, in the not too distant future, users will be able to create, execute, and share their Gene Pattern Notebooks there. Uh, and this enables true zero install usage of Gene Pattern Notebook for the non-programming user. Users will also be able to comment on shared notebooks as well as save and adapt them for their own uses. So for those people who want to use Gene Pattern Notebooks locally, there are also options. 
uh, we have a Docker image, so put that on your bingo cards, um, of the gene pattern notebook. Uh, we also have a Docker image of the gene pattern notebook repository for those people who want to run local repositories. And for programmers, or if you already have your own uh, Jupyter installation, you can just use pip or conda and install the uh, extension that way. So I'm going to show you a uh, demo of the notebook in action. And before I do that, I'm going to give you a little bit of a background on the scientific use case that is being supported by this notebook. Uh, it is based on research that was done recently to uh, predict medulloblastoma outcome. Um, the, the purpose is that medulloblastoma is the most common pediatric brain tumor, and treatment causes life-altering neurological side effects. And we know that there are some patients who respond to treatment and some patients who don't respond to treatment, so there's uh, urgency surrounding identification of those patients who are going to respond to treatment before treatment is applied. So the approach was to integrate a number of different types of genomic data, including gene expression, pathway data, and uh, genomic aberration data, and combining them using a Bayesian approach. These particular uh, approaches resulted in better accuracy and uh, very applicably to making them into a notebook, this approach can generalize to many different uh, scientific approaches. So uh, its use as a notebook is very um, uh, uh, recommendable. So the entire workflow uh, looks like this. And in the interest of brevity, we're going to focus on just a couple of steps that uh, are going to be represented in the notebook. So here is our experiment. and. Uh, the video is going to cover a few of the things I've already said, uh, but is going to do so in a much nicer voice, so keep listening. Okay, so maybe we'll just... unites the capabilities of the Jupyter Notebook environment and the Gene Pattern Platform to provide powerful analyses within the flexible notebook environment, all without the need to write code. To demonstrate, we'll create a new notebook. From the Jupyter Notebook environment main page, pull down the New menu and select Notebooks, and whichever version of Python you have installed. This will create a new Gene Pattern Notebook, which will open in a new browser tab. Here you see the familiar Jupyter Notebook interface, including the Jupyter menu, providing access to the notebook capabilities. To build a new notebook, you add cells containing different types of data. So, in our new notebook, we add the title, description, abstract, and summary of the analytical steps, as well as graphics and table data. The formatting capabilities in Jupyter Notebook are made available through Markdown. With the Gene Pattern Notebook extension, we have improved upon the capabilities of the existing Jupyter Markdown cell to allow users to create formatted text directly, as they would in a word processing program, without the need to know Markdown. Now we'll demonstrate the additional capabilities that the Gene Pattern Notebook environment provides. First, we need to create a new Gene Pattern Login cell. To do so, select any blank cell and change that cell's type to gene pattern using the cell menu found in the Jupyter toolbar. Once inserted, the cell will prompt you to select an available gene pattern server and log in. If you do not have a gene pattern account, you can register from this cell as well. Note that all gene pattern servers are free to use. Now we will add a gene pattern analysis module to our notebook by clicking the gene pattern button on the left of the screen and choosing one of the available analyses on the server to which we have connected. You can browse all of the available modules by scrolling through the alphabetized list or you can search for modules by category, keyword, or name. We then fill in the necessary parameters and datasets and click run. 
This will collapse the cell where the parameters were entered and create a new cell where the status of the job and then the job results will be displayed. To expand a collapsed cell, simply click on the plus sign in the upper right hand corner. Previously, researchers who wanted to include their analyses in a notebook would have had to do so through written code. Gene Pattern Notebook removes that requirement, providing hundreds of methods for the genomic analysis of cancer data. Once the module has finished running, the results can be sent to other gene pattern cells using the UI, or they can be accessed by programming users via Python, just as you would use any other Jupyter Notebook results. This is another way in which gene pattern analyses integrate seamlessly into the flow of a notebook. To demonstrate the programmatic use case, we'll use Python to view the PDF output, which shows the level of pathway activation after projection of the medulloblastoma subtypes gene expression data into that space. As we've seen here, the Gene Pattern Notebook environment is both powerful and easy to use. Gene Pattern Notebook is also easy to access and run. We have developed the Gene Pattern Notebook resource, an online site where you can develop and share your own Gene Pattern Notebooks, as well as access example notebooks. For those who want to run Gene Pattern Notebooks locally, we provide two methods for installation. If you are looking for a complete off-the-shelf installation, we provide a Docker image that can be run using the Kitematic application. This requires the least amount of manual configuration. Those who prefer the manual approach can install the Gene Pattern Notebook extension via the PIP or Conda package management systems. You've now been introduced to the Gene Pattern Notebook environment, a seamless integration of the Gene Pattern interface and the Jupyter Notebook, and have been shown how easy it is to use and install for non-programming and programming users alike. For more information, tutorials, and examples, please visit genepattern.org slash genepattern dash notebooks. Okay, so as one note, um, the demo referred to cancer data, but I just want to make clear that the notebooks can be applied, of course, to any type of data. And I just want to acknowledge the gene pattern development team. Uh, and this was also done in collaboration with Fernando Perez and the Jupiter team, as well as a number of scientific collaborators. And I'll be glad to take any questions. Thank you, Mike.